So if this was your last uh, opportunity. Now, please stay with the question I'm going to ask you now, if it really was like that. Okay? And there's a countdown. Clock is ticking. What can you do with five minutes? What can you do with five minutes in this regard? Four minutes. Three minutes. Two minutes. What can you achieve in two minutes? In one minute, in thirty seconds, in ten seconds, what you can achieve? If you are Usain Bolt, maybe you can break another record or something. But what can you really achieve, as much as we are speaking about? And perhaps this type of challenge is so powerful because you just have to give up on on physical action. There's no physical action you can do to to to. To be what you are, it doesn't work like that. What technique do you require? None. So I would say, just drop all of that. Just drop all of that because it's not going to work for you. Suppose you could just keep just dropping everything. Just drop, meaning don't engage with anything. Don't combine your natural sense of self with anything. Even with an angel, we even like just drop everything. Now you can do it right now. Also, will it take you ten seconds? Drop everything. Just be totally empty, and yet not waiting. It'll be, be totally empty. Drop even the one who drops even. Really do it. And speak from there where you are. Are you in time? No, you have to do it. If you drop every all your associations, all even the most the most precious thing for you right now in ten seconds. Maybe some of you are travelling away from home. If you had you know ten minutes Ten seconds. There isn't time to even make a proper phone call. Say bye, bye, darling. I'm bored. Okay. Can you bear that? So you know, everything is going. You drop everything. Then drop every, every association, every aspiration, everything. You know, if you drop right now, you know, what remains that cannot be dropped? Because if you drop everything, some you still you still are. Can you drop you? I'm not talking about your person. I'm talking about the memory, and your memory of experiences you have had past. I'm not talking about that. Drop that. That that that's, that's already gone anyway. It is only perpetuated in you because of memory and sentiment. It's gone. That's why it's called past. It's already gone. So drop. Leave everything. And don't call this any technique. Just leave everything, and report to me from here. What is here? And did you create this? Whatever is left, that doesn't, is not touched by your effort. Is unaffected by whatever you call your life. Try it and see. And is it an attainment? Whose attainment? Because if you drop everything, it even drops the even the potential achiever of dropping something is gone. So what remain? I'm not asking your head. So if that that remain hmm? is it a state of mind what remains is it a state of mind no does it have a birthday or a star sign it does have rule in planets that is yourself
this is our play. This is our play. You know, this and this and this. All the things you value and so on. You know. Largely it is gone, sustained only by memory. Can you bring back a sample of yesterday to this moment? It's all gone. And luckily, thank God you can say that things pass. That they pass without you having to put them away. They pass. Everything passes. Except one thing. Find what that thing is that doesn't pass. And you have won your freedom. Discover that which does not pass. It is not on the radar of time. And where is it? Where is it located? Where is it that which I speak of? Where precisely is it? All your talk about this and that and your meditations and stuff is just in the theatre of consciousness, a momentary and fleeting. Discover that which carries no story, no history. How far will you have to go? And your first step is taken. In what direction will you go? So this has to be something that really bites in into your consciousness, so much so that you have to go and sit down with it and just marinate your attention in that and just be with that, because that's your good fortune today. As you begin to discover this, you will not have room for anything else for the moment. Marinate in it. It will absorb your duality. And there is no need to be afraid of these words, what I tell you. And thereafter, when you turn, return to natural functioning and so on, you will see that your actions are wind assisted, in fact. Something is, you know, your, your discernment will be so that previously expressed actions and intentions which were a waste of time and an hemorrhaging of your attention, that will stop. You will not be living life. You are life. And the flow of it is perceived within your own being. These are things that I cannot put them down in some textbook. It doesn't need to be. You don't need to remember any little part, unless it is something that is so quintessential, that when you remember this, everything is captured in it. So though I seem to have focused on speaking with you, I am speaking with all of you about it, actually. We do not need to have even a separate answer. Actually, I do not think there is time for this now. But is it worth it or not? Yes, totally worth it, because we can, for a time, be living in ignorance of our true nature. Uh, largely, we seem to be doing this, uh, because you can, and because even the ego, being consciousness, it has a life, and there's sweetness, uh, bitterness, and sweetness, and everything, and it's enough to feel, you know, you know, it's not bad. I love being me, and so on, and that's you're perfectly entitled to that. Free to be free and free to be bound. This is something like this. And there is no criticism or cynicism about it. But as soon as, by the grace of life, in whatever means or method it comes to you, your attention is turned or an urge grows in you to go more deeply, life comes to, to satisfy that. And something may come from inside you, a tendency that we all have and inherit somehow to 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 work against your own freedom and energies inside that is working against this freedom 
but only so long as you sustain or retain the sense of personhood. As soon as that, that grip is broken, there is no opponents to freedom in you. The very ego that, we, that tries to protect itself, and that you think you are protecting yourself, the thing you are trying to, to hold on to, is the very thing you should transcend and leave. But gradually we come into the recognition of that. And you are so much in the arms of grace also. Don't think, oh, me and my little strength can't do it. It's true, you and your little strength can't do it. Rumi says, the one who brought me here must take me home. Who is the one who brought you here? You see? That grace is uh, calling you home. And where is home? In which direction is home? You and home are the same thing. <laughs> you and home are the same thing. Until you discover this, your home will be bricks, or boards, or something. It will be a place. And life, God also, is using all our modern things to teach us great metaphors. That like once upon a time, your your dress had to be, you know, made out of some bricks and has a door and windows and so on. Now your address can be internet. You can have an email address. You know, it says, okay, address doesn't have to be something like that. I can be okay. So, where's your? Ad- this is your address. If you see this body, I'm quite likely in it. That is your address when you're coming near, and then on from this, you'll find something that you cannot speak about. You cannot speak about, and it will not make you a cripple in this world. Sometimes the mind itself plays this game: that if you go further, you're going to lose everything. You're going to be a beggar on the street. You know, nobody will recognize you. You're going to be alone because who wants to marry a Buddha? I mean, like like this, and it catches many people. But freedom is not restricted in that way. The outer things are not; uh, they're not our opponents. All this life, oh, so magnificent in its expression, is not our natural enemy. In fact, you see and derive great joy from our perceiving of it. The enemy is inside our way of thinking for a while, and chiefly personal identity. Everything boils down to this mistaken identity that leaves you only in the mode of personhood, and the whole world is suffering from person poison. Too much person and not presence.